Halo is one of the biggest names in video games, all thanks to its first game, Halo Combat Evolved. But I'm here to say that... This ain't it, Chief. Sorry. Not sorry. I cannot believe it. Sup, Lunatics? I'm Moon Spirit, and there's no way around this. I was not the biggest fan of Halo. Despite it being a staple in the video game Pantheon, Halo never clicked with me. This is partially because of my first encounter with Xbox fanboys, or rather, my first taste of internet trolls. And it all happened on the now defunct G4 TV forums. Rest in peace, G4 TV. And most of them were undoubtedly Halo trolls. I mostly recall some of the Nintendo or Xbox threads would be invaded by one or two trolls, and they would either say something like, Ha! Nintendo's for titties! Or, Xbox is the lead console ever! Or, Nintendo's the suck source! I'm looking at you, Halo Mr. Chef! But hating Halo because of toxic parts of its fanbase would be close-minded. So, despite my annoyances with its fans, I give it a chance, and it wasn't for me. But hey, who cares what I think? The entire world loved Halo Combat Evolved. It defined the Xbox, ushered in a new era of console shooters, and sold more copies than anyone would have ever expected. I won't deny the impact the series has had on gaming, and good on Microsoft for solidifying their place in the gaming landscape. But it doesn't mean it is without flaws. So for this video, I'll be looking at the Anniversary Edition on the Xbox 360. Sure, there is the Master Chief Collection, but I don't have an Xbox One, nor do I plan to get one, and the PC port still has no release date by the time this video drops. So, with all that said, allow me to enlighten you why Halo Combat Evolved, at least to me, is not great in my eyes. But just remember, this is my opinion and mine alone. You are not wrong to loving it. To you, this is your childhood, the most important game of your life. For me, I'd rather play Half-Life for this game. So keep an open mind, okay? Okay, let's begin. The war between the Space Marines and the Covenant had been going on for who knows how long, and Master Chief is the only hope the Marines have after losing Reach. While the plot of Humans vs. Aliens is typical for sci-fi, my problem rests on Master Chief. To me, he just isn't that engaging of a character. I see him as a typical badass soldier that could take on hordes of aliens, all while wearing power armor that must weigh like 300 pounds. But nothing about his personality sticks out. Except for making the occasional quip, but I'm sure he got more depth in the sequel. I find the Doom Marine more compelling because this action speak louder than Master Chief's, in my humble opinion. Examples. Doom Marine hears orders? BAM! Don't care. Doom Marine has to remove a fuel source gently? Ha! Ah, he just stomps it. Collecting media figures of himself? Eh, give the little guy a fist bump. His personality seems Fuck you. I'm Doom Marine. Remember that old John. Master Chief to me is this. Orders to go there? Yes, sir. Save your captain despite it being dangerous? No soldier gets left behind, like a true Marine. That for betrayal? Try me. Those streets right there spell typical military badass, at least to me. Honestly, the Sergeant Captain Keys were more fascinating, mostly because I at least have an idea of who they are. The Sergeant is the typical no-nonsense drill sergeant archetype you expect in many military movies, though he's a bit endearing in his cockiness. And Captain Keys has more depth to his character, especially when you have to mercy kill him as he was assimilated by the Flood and finding a terminal log of his final moments. I even find Cortana to be more memorable, despite the fact she's an AI companion. The Covenant seems like a typical alien force, and I wasn't invested in them as a huge threat in this game. I'm sure they are fleshed out more in the sequels, as I am aware of the one called The Arbiter, but the main focus is here, the first game. But the game's real focus shifts when the Flood emerge. These living spore aliens are grotesque, but whenever I see them come out, I'm less unsettled and more aggravated. Maybe it's because of how desensitized I am to zombie hordes due to the tireless amount of play they got in games and film. I will say that the floating drone, 343 Guilty Spark, is the most engaging antagonist in the game. The 
especially when it turns on you. You see, Guilty Spark is like how like Thousand has centuries worth of knowledge at its disposal. And through cold logic, it was going to sacrifice an entire galaxy of life just to destroy the Flood. Even its appearances in the foul levels are disconcerting, especially when it looks at the Autumn's records on mankind with glee, eagerly waiting to categorize human history as it destroys our heroes. So the plot doesn't quite hook me in, but it's a game, so what do I think of it? Well... When Halo came out, I was a teenager obsessed with first-person shooters like Doom 2, Duke Nukem, and of course, Half-Life. Those titles were built on the foundation of badass heroes wielding numerous guns and taking down whatever foes they encountered. And in comes Halo who changes the formula just a bit to make it stand out, and I honestly did not take those changes so well. Protagonists like Duke Nukem and Gordon Freeman were able to carry a huge arsenal on their backs and obliterate and decimate their enemies. On the other side of things, Master Chief, a person engineered to be a super soldier, can only carry two weapons. Look, I get that they were going for realism here, and I'm over that this day and age, but you mean to tell me a futuristic military power knows how to fly in space but still carry two weapons only? It just slightly takes the immersion off a bit when the future hasn't advanced much in the Haloverse compared to other futuristic sci-fi shooters like Deus Ex and Gears of War. I do, however, love the Covenant's plasma weaponry, especially watching them panic when a plasma's grenade sticks on them. While I love the shotgun, I'm a little confused with the so-called pistol, considering it hits less like a pistol and more like a <laughs> magnum. Seriously, it takes me several shots of other weapons to down the gigantic hunters, yet a few well-placed pistol shots put them down fast. Just how? My suspension of disbelief can only be raised so much by that context alone. While the combat is mostly fine, there are some aspects that irritate me. The elites that carry the plasma swords can be unfair, but it's a little wrong that you don't get to use the sword when you kill them, at least until the sequels allowed it. Grenades are satisfying to use, but you sometimes have to really pay attention to where you throw them. If there's a pile of grenades where you threw them, or there's an enemy that carries a grenade, chances are that you could unknowingly cause a chain reaction, which could escalate a fight beautifully or horrendously which I face the latter a lot. Shame that this was during a time before grenade indicators were a thing in first person shooters. The gunplay is fine and it does mean you have to play smarter since some weapon loadouts are more favorable, though the level design doesn't quite complement that very well, but I'll get to that later. But it also kind of sucks that you can't reload Covenant ammo anywhere and you have to switch to another type to get more ammo. The vehicles are a mixed bag for me, but the Warthog, I got gripes. Well, yes, it is kind of fun to drive. I don't feel like I was driving a military Jeep because the controls made me feel like I'm riding in an oversized RC car. The one thing I also couldn't grasp is how such a sturdy vehicle could roll over more easily than today's SUVs or pickups. The Ghost of Banshee are by far the most fun to play with for me, primarily because their levitation capabilities let me have real free roaming capabilities and at least I can attack with them, whereas you need CPU Marines to aid you while on the Warthog. So that's how it plays, but does the graphical overhaul make up for it? Since this is an HD remake of the first game, of course they would give it a graphical facelift, but to really see the difference, the game actually gives you the ability to switch in between graphical styles with just the push of a button to see how far this game has come since then. And I'll admit, the remake looks far better as it should, but the visual upgrade doesn't fix the technical issues this game has. The frame rate is mostly stable, unless you are engaged in a more chaotic firefight, especially when many grenades are locked, which causes a chain reaction of explosive shades of blue. This might be the engine the game's built on, but the texture pumping is rampant. Throughout my entire playthrough, I experienced one crash, during my successful rescue of Captain Keys, and once I attacked some jackals, Next thing that happened was a hard freeze. That meant having to start from the top again at the stealth part of the mission. I put air quotes there because even though I hid myself on a higher elevation behind some foliage and terrain, my cover was blown easily and the Covenant apparently had perfect vision to find and shoot where I was. And that's another problem I have. The enemy AI can be unfair at times. Their ability to easily kill the player from such long distances make the whole experience frustrating. I was, however, amused by this marine suffering from flood PTSD, 
and I would play hide and peek at him to see if he stopped shooting. Like you, Dude, come on, stop. Dude, come, come on. Please, stop. That's what I did. Dude, play really, dead. stop. Can you please ones. stop? Are you done? Okay. Okay, gone to... <sighs> Whatever. The animations are okay, though I always find it funny how everyone reacts to explosions. Every time someone dies to an explosion, the death animation is always them flying while flailing their arms a bit like they're swimming in the air, until they drop dead. But even in death, you can blow them up again and they'll do the same flailing. Now let me end this segment with the endlessly floating and cluttering weapons. With Halo, I really hope for the levels to be immersive, especially because I love sci-fi, but I'm here to state that, no. Most of these levels are not. That's because I mostly couldn't make heads or tails of where the hell I was going. I swear, the level design does a poor job at conveying where I'm supposed to go. A handful of them place you in a massive, fairly empty space, and the only indicator that you are heading in the right direction is if you find enemies. Also, since all the levels in the game reuse the same environments, I had even more trouble figuring out where I was. It felt like I was having a bad case of deja vu. Throughout the game, I have seen many shades of blue, purple, and a ton of gray. But the gray feels more like cold, concrete gray. And seeing many of these colors for hours on end gives the game a sterile vibe. I mean, the alien outposts and architecture do invoke the advanced aesthetics you expect, but going through these multiple hallways feel like I'm trudging through a barren hospital. At least some of the architecture had the decency to put arrows on the floor, unless you have to go through the mission in reverse. Because the level design is so huge and sprawling, it kills the pacing of missions, especially as checkpoints can be sketchy as if they come in whenever they feel like when you are far into a level. The waypoint system is helpful, but those were few and far between. And like I said, the checkpoints don't help much either. This session of the game, where I'm under siege by all these covenant forces with one bar of health left, took me 20 to 30 minutes, and this was on normal difficulty! And shut up, I am not playing Legendary, as intended! None of the locales were that memorable to me, because they could be categorized as such. Spaceship, jungle, mountainsides, alien spaceship, and finally, long and winding corridors. Like I said before, you'll revisit a lot of the same looking places with a different objective, but in most cases, you'll start from one spot, then inside a labyrinthian area to the objective, only for you to backtrack to where you came, which makes a lot of the missions U-turn based. I'm not saying it's bad level design per se, but, but I feel like I'm going through recycled levels or in circles throughout the game. Wait, a circle? A circle, like, a halo? What the fuck? Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up! I don't know if that was meant to be intentional, or if that was a gigantic coincidence, or if that was accidentally brilliant. But I can tell you what I don't think is brilliant. When the Flood entered the fray. As said before, the first time the Flood burst onto the scene, I was a nerd. Kind of on edge, maybe. But those things piss me off to no end, especially the little bitty ones that come in. Whenever they sprout, I think the reaction would be along the lines of, Oh no, not these guys again! But for me, it's like, Oh no, not these guys again! Seriously, while a lot of them are terrifying, a good couple rounds of the assault rifle destroys them like reaping a cornfield. With that said, one level did prove to be the bane of my existence. The damn library! All that level is 40 minutes of nothing but walking and shooting every single flood that comes in while being escorted by Guilty Spark. 40 minutes of nothing but shooting through hallways, waiting for the gates to open so that you can enter an elevator to go through another long ass hallway to wait for another gate to another elevator, all the while that floating bastard goes about <laughs> like it's skipping to its loop. Even when his sentinels do help, they don't help you any more than they should because they usually stayed in one place instead of following you to help you. But I guess that's because they don't want to make the game too easy for you since they could also raise the flood like a tractor and a crop field as well. Alright, 
That's it! And another thing is that level finally ends! I was led to believe these Sentinels were supposed to be the technologically advanced machines that had lived for centuries. And yet, when I got betrayed and was about to be lasered to death, I expected to be in for the fight of my life. But no. Just a few well-placed shotgun blasts or a few shots of plasma and they're destroyed within seconds. Maybe that's just me, but I expected them to be made of harder stuff than that. Yet, I can kill them like every other enemy in the game. And to finish off this giant rant, I was not a fan of the climatic half. Especially since you had to, once again, revisit the same levels but going backwards on a different path! To get rid of the flood so they won't threaten the galaxy, Chief needs to blow up the autumn, which will cause a huge explosion strong enough to destroy Halo. To do that, you have to retract the exhaust couplings and launch a well-placed explosive into the exhaust to cause a chain reaction, but you need to do some good jumping to get to the terminals. Just getting on the couplings is hard enough because it requires precise timing just to get on, and timing it wrong will cause you to fall and do it all over again. Even when you do actually couple the exhaust, a well-placed grenade is almost impossible! Or maybe it's just that I sucked and succumbed under pressure from the Sentinel attacks and had to retrieve a rocket launcher just to finish the job. What's funny is that I could easily get it without facing any form of resistance. Even when I did manage to cause the explosion, the last part was getting out of the exploding ship. And to do that, I needed to commandeer the Warthog. While some see this as an exciting moment, my experience was more vexing. Like I said, I do not like how the Warthog controls, and nothing kills a thrilling escape more than when I repeatedly bump into obstacles and have to flip over my toppled Warthog. How exciting! Especially when you reach their landing zone for full hammer to pick you up, but it's down by enemy ships. And if you die, you have to restart at the beginning of the escape, instead of having a checkpoint at that moment. Yay! Even though I finally finished the game, I did not feel a sense of accomplishment like, I did it! But relief like, finally I'm done! In the final lines, No, I think we're just getting started. Yeah, no sh** we're not done. You guys have over 15 years of games to go on. I hope you understand why I'm not a fan of Halo, but does this mean I think this is a flaming piece of sh**? Absolutely not! The soundtrack is definitely tops, especially the opening theme and choral singing, though I find it too much when I had to hear chanting in every loading screen. Other than that, I personally don't think highly of this game because of some of its game mechanics and long-winded level design. But if you guys love this game, then more power to y'all. After all, I'm just a drop in the vast ocean of opinions. But if you were to ask me if I'm willing to play a session of Halo multiplayer, would I refuse? Hell no! I'd be more than happy to play. Hell, my fondest memories of college were playing Halo 3 multiplayer with my gaming club. So many custom matches, getting my ass handed, one passing by staff member overheard us and said to us, You're some loud crazy sons of bitches. <laughs> Great memories, wouldn't trade any of it away. But please, let me know if the series gets better after Combat Evolved. I hear good things about Halo 2, but I've yet to play it. I tried Halo 3 once, but it unfortunately crashed on my 360, so that fell through. I even tried a bit of Rage, but I couldn't get invested with characters that had no face, despite them wearing different colored power armor. To you guys, this was one of the best games you ever played. For me, this is just one game I'd skip. But that's all the time for y'all today, so until then, I'm Moon Spirit, and I leave you with one last hot take. I hate SpongeBob SquarePants. I prefer the real 90s Nicktoons than that. Sorry. Not sorry.